So today we're going to be walking through the derivation of the ideal rocket equation. Essentially what the ideal rocket equation is, it relates the change in velocity to our, you know, our effective exhaust velocity and then the lo natural logarithm of our um, final mass over our initial mass. The reason why we got to do this is because our mass is changing as, you know, our rocket is um, flying through time here. So let's take a picture. Let's take a look at, you know, just a generic ro launch rocket. Initially, you would want to think that, yes, we have a mass of the rocket and then it's expelling with a certain velocity. But actually, we have this differential of mass that's getting pushed out the back, which allows us to actually go forward. That differential of mass is then getting subtracted from our total mass. We have our velocity and then differential velocity that were created, plus our exit velocity that's getting pushed out, and then our initial velocity that our um, rocket's going. So let's look. Our main thing that we're going to use is conservation of momentum. Let's just remind ourselves that momentum is P equals mass times velocity. Um, so this is what we're trying to solve for here. It's our ideal rocket equation. So let's just jump in using this um, kind of diagram and... Um, using, you know, our equation for momentum here. So we simply write out, you know, our, our mass times velocities for each of these scenarios. We can add them together. Um, and then we're just simply distributing here to get this. So um, since we're just using momentum, we get momentum equals mv, and so we can substitute that in over here. Now let's take a look at where we go from here. Well, we can actually cancel out um, a handful of terms. Um, so as you can see, we have uh, mass times velocity here and here. We can get rid of those. These are two differentials, two infinitely small pieces, so we can go um, all of those to zero. What else do we have? These two terms go to zero, and we're just left with simply um, our exit times the differential um, and plus our mass times our velocity differential. We can then divide each term by mass to then get it into this form. Now where we're going from here, let's integrate. Easy, we're just going to integrate from our initial mass to our final mass, since that's what we're trying to find, and our, from our initial velocity to our final velocity um, over that. One over here, it's just going to be, uh, you know, basically our delta V, and so that's where we come um, end up with getting this term over here. Straight that, which is just going to be, you know, our, our, v, our v final minus V initial. Here, let's look. What's the log? What's the um, integration of one over m? Well, that's going to be our natural log, and so we can then write this natural log m, and we're going to um, evaluate this from our initial mass and our final mass here. So we can jump down into here, m f for final, and our natural log of m initial, and so. Um, right, this is all going to be multiplied, so I guess I forgot this up here, by our v exit. This is, we're assuming our constant exit velocity, and so that's why we're not, um, you know, uh, we can exclude it from integration here. Now, if we take a look over here, we have a law of logarithms where if we have, you know, one natural log minus another, we can actually um, kind of put it together. So we're going to put it into that form because this is what's most commonly seen as, um, you know, in textbooks and everything. So this is essentially our, uh, you know, ideal rocket equation. Let's just put it in the correct form. That's very commonly seen. And let's just take a look at this V exit real quick since after we got it, how can we really define this? Um, and so this is going to be defined as our gravitational constant times our um, specific impulse. And I'll cover this in a later video, but basically this is kind of an engine characteristic. So this allows us to really compare engines and then this is this is gravity. So obviously this would change if you were, you know, on a different planet or something like that. But for the most part, you know, for Earth, you know, we're gonna be pretty much using um, the same thing if it's an Earth launch vehicle. So hope this helped get you to the ideal rocket equation, made a little more sense, and um, we'll cover some more in uh, other videos. Thank you guys.